Hi everyone, welcome back to the Student Doctor channel. Today we'll be talking about a uh, very long-awaited subject. A lot of people have asked me to make a video about how to study for Step 2 CS and basically what my experience was with the exam. So, here it is. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Step 2 is actually broken up into two parts. There's a CK and a CS. And CK is clinical knowledge, CS is clinical skills. So it's basically a theory exam and a practical exam. So the theory exam is quite like step one, and I'll talk about that in a separate video. But today we'll talk about CS, which is the clinical skills practical exam. When should you take your CS exam? I took step two CS right before I graduated from medical school. I had done a clerkship and then I practiced uh, for CS during that clerkship in which I used the first aid for CS book. Basically, it's kind of like the way you use first aid for step one. It's the Bible for CS, as far as I know. Um, if you do all of the cases in the CS book, you should be pretty comfortable with this exam and you should be able to pass it. However, if you're a little scared or if you feel um, that you've heard so many different stories about CS and you get a little frustrated or a little scared that, hey, maybe, you know, it's not as easy as everyone says it is, then I definitely think you can benefit from a class. Um, there are many different courses out there. I obviously haven't tried all of them. I've only tried the Kaplan course. I took the Kaplan course in Chicago and I really liked it. I actually had no idea that there's a little community of IMGs kind of settled around that center and they study for step one, step two CK, and CS. And it's a nice community. They get to study together. They find study partners. They have a little exam room where you can practice uh, seeing patients. So if you are someone who is taking six months to one year to study for this for these exams, maybe just for step one, then it might benefit you to be around a community of people who are, you know, in the same boat. I am sure there are many centers around the U.S. like that, and there are many other companies who do uh, very similar things and have uh, similar communities around them, so you should really uh, try to look into those. I would suggest doing a clerkship right before you give your Step 2 CS exam especially if you're not planning on doing a course for Step 2 CS, such as the Kaplan uh, course. So if you're planning on taking Step 2 CS without um, doing the courses because they're expensive or you just don't feel that need to take them, then definitely um, look into doing a clerkship and plan that out properly. Because if you do a clerkship right before you give your Step 2 CS exam, not only will you um, kill two birds with one stone because you'll be able to get a letter of recommendation during that clerkship, but you'll also get the experience you need uh, to feel comfortable in an American setting, seeing American patients, and um, you know writing the patient note the way the doctor wants you to. So you'll get that practice in, the practice that you need before you give Step 2 CS. Starting May 2016, so just this last May, they did make some important changes to the Step 2 CS exam, and you should really take note and read the forums to keep up to date on how everyone is feeling about these new changes, if they're uh, drastic changes or not. Fortunately for me, I did not have to deal with these changes because I took mine this last April. But now, for everyone who is taking it, the changes uh, seem to be small to me. There will be one case uh, where you might have to look at an x-ray or a pathology report or some kind of image um, that the patient will bring with them and you will have to interpret it and you will have to write it into your patient note. On the USMLE website, they say that that image will only come up once during the entire examination. So it's not like each patient that you're seeing, you're going to have to always interpret an image. You might not even get an image during your exam. So it's very um, random, and I think that they are probably just trying it out at the moment. So no one knows how much of an effect this will have on your score, but just be aware that you should practice 
x-rays and images and reports and know how to write them in your patient note. Let's talk about the structure of the Step 2 CS exam. The CS exam is broken up into 12 cases. Remember, now there might be an image included in one of the cases that you have to interpret. So the CS exam is pretty long and uh, you should definitely be prepared for that. But you'll probably have enough of an adrenaline rush to get you through the exam. But just always be prepared um, the night before, the day before, you know, eat well, sleep well, and be very fresh and awake for this exam. So you have an allotted amount of time for each case. So there is enough time to see the patient and then there's some time to write a patient note. So there is an exam room and right outside the room there is a, a computer sitting there. The number on the patient's room corresponds with the computer that you're supposed to use. If you go and take a practice exam in either the Kaplan Center or anywhere else, they usually have rooms set up for you which look exactly like the actual CS exam rooms. So you can really get a feel for how uh, the exam is going to go. You can even take a practice test at one of these centers and I think that's excellent. Even if you never want to take a, a course and pay all that money for the course, I think that a practice exam can be beneficial as well. So here's the thing about this exam. Everyone is really tense about it and then there are some people who are just a little too chill about it. But basically, all this exam comes down to is common sense. It's just practical knowledge and just having the common sense to get the important points down on the notes and to do the important relative, relevant um, physical exam points and, you know, to communicate well with the patient. So it's all just something that you probably would do in clinic anyway, but now that you're in an exam situation and you're timed, you will get flustered and won't be able to do it. So you just have to practice a lot, and I think that is the only way to um, do really well in this exam is even if you don't have a study partner to practice with, which I think everyone should really try and find before they start studying for this exam, but in case you don't, um, you know, just take a family member and force them to study with you, or um, I don't know, just you know, pretend, take your imaginary friend from childhood and sit them on the couch and pretend that there's someone there and just keep practicing out loud. Don't do it in your head because everything seems easy in your mind, but when you actually start practicing in real life and you say the words out loud, you realize that it's not as easy as you thought it was. Or there might be just small, weird places where you're stumbling, uh, where you're not able to say things in the correct manner. And that just gets better with practice. The other thing to remember with this exam is that this exam is very forgiving. Um, the examiners are very forgiving. So when you make a mistake in this exam, do not get flustered and don't let your one bad case ruin the next 11 cases, which is something that I had a lot of trouble with. So let me tell you about my experience with Step 2 CS and it will make you feel better and make you feel like you have a shot at passing this exam. When I went to give Step 2 CS, I was totally prepared. I stayed in the hotel. I knew where the location was, where I had to go. I had a little trouble finding an Uber, but I was able to manage my time wisely and I got there on time. Um, and I was just, I was ready for this exam. I had taken my clinical clerkship month to study for this exam. I gave the Kaplan course, which was I think four days long, um, including the practice exam. And then I took the real exam within a week of that Kaplan course. So I was in Chicago for um, about a week, maybe a couple more days. So I go into the exam center, you uh, get to sit in an area where they have um, some water and coffee for you available. They go over the, um, they do a little presentation 
about the details of the exam, um, how the exam day is going to go. They give you your agenda, and then you just wait until <laughs> the exam starts. So right before they start the timer, they line you up in front of the door where you're going to start. You stand there, then they start the timer, or basically someone says on the overhead speaker that you can go in. You go in and the patient is already in the room and from the minute you open that door to you come out, you are being judged by the patient um, on the entire experience. Remember to knock before you go in, open the door confidently, go shake the patient's hand, introduce yourself, hi, I am Dr. So-and-so and, -so, and um, nice to meet you and ask for the chief complaint or however you want to start. So for my first case, all of the history taking went pretty smoothly. I did take a little bit more time than I should have uh, because I wanted to get all the details in and then I realized that I'm losing time for the physical exam. So I quickly went over and I grabbed the otoscope from the wall and it was fine for a split two seconds before the entire thing, the entire panel holding up the otoscope and you know the light and everything it just fell down basically almost on top of me it just fell down on the floor and even the patient who you know these are actors who are always in character but even he lost his character and he felt so bad he tried to started trying to pick it up and I started trying to pick it up and then I realized that I'm running out of time just trying to pick up this stupid set and so I opened the door and I called the proctor and I said this thing fell on top of me what do I do and so then the proctor came in and he tried to you know he set it up basically and he plugged in all the wires again and by the time he was done, I was so flustered because who wants to start their CS exam like that, right? So I was so flustered that I just kind of stared at the patient and the patient stared at me and then I quickly did some, I forgot about the otoscope and I did some physical exam and I don't even know what I did and I came out of there because the time, basically I ran out of time and I came out of the room and I had to start writing my patient note. I'm sitting there writing my note, typing it out, and I'm thinking, what do I even write? What physical exam did I even manage to do? So I did not write anything that I did not find. Always remember that. When you're doing the exam, never write something down that is not there. So I definitely just wrote in what I had done, very honestly, and I wrote in a good history um, and ROS because I had done that well. It was just the physical exam was just lacking. So even in diagnostic exams and tests that I had to do, I was very uh, scared as to like, what am I supposed to put? Because I'm not very sure what the physical exam findings were. So I just kind of put in what I thought from the history I should. And basically that just it just messed me up. I thought, oh my gosh, I did so badly. I'm going to fail this exam. I'm going to fail this exam just because that one case went so ridiculously badly. So what I want to convey to you is that even if something like that happens on your exam, always remember to just brush it aside. And even though it seems so difficult to do that, just brush it aside and, you know, give it your all for your next case. Because even if you mess it up, there are 11 other cases, and it's not possible that you're going to mess up every single case that badly. Okay, it just really isn't. I did not mess up any of my cases after that as badly as I messed up my first one. It could only get better from there, right? Later on, in the middle of my exam, the one of the proctors um, talked to me right after we were done writing a section, and she said that... Um, <laughs> Basically, I would do a 13th case. I had the option of either going through with only 12 cases and her writing a note in saying that, um, you know, this incident had happened in the first case, so they should consider that when they were grading me. Otherwise, um, that I could basically do a 13th case, and if it came down to it that I had failed the first case, they would replace the uh, first case with the 13th case. 
So, and that was because it was not my fault. What happened was really a freak accident kind of a thing. So, um, that, so basically remember that that provision is there in case something like that happens to you. I had no idea, um, that that would be available to me until maybe the third or fourth case in when they came to speak to me about the 13th case. So I did choose to do a 13th case. When everyone else left, I was the only one in the center. I, <laughs> some poor actor had to stay and, um, you know, act as the patient for me. And the last um, case, I did it. I was really very tired. Um, I had barely been able to eat from the nerves. And so don't do that. I was basically just on coffee and five hour energy and some energy bars which is really gross so don't do that to yourself eat properly um keep it light you don't want to feel sleepy post lunch um but yeah so i did the 13th case and then after that i thought for sure i had failed everything there were a few cases um in between the first and the 13th case that i felt went poorly as well. I felt that I was very unsure in some of the physical exam maneuvers. So um, I felt like I had failed this exam. So this exam score takes three months to come. So your score won't come for three months. And for three months, I thought that I had failed this exam. In those three months, I gave my step two CK right after my CS. I had studied for two months and I gave my CK. And it was really demoralizing going back and reading those cases and thinking that, oh, I should have done this in the CS exam, I should have done that, and I'm going to fail for sure. It was so bad. But regardless of the myriad of mistakes that I did end up making in the CS exam, I think in the end, what saved me is that I was practical and I used some common sense. Um, I did run out of time in both the patient encounter and in typing out the notes sometimes because my notes were too um, lengthy, but I think that I did take a practical approach, um, a common sense approach, and I didn't do anything uh, you know, very out of the ordinary. I didn't order any tests that you know, I didn't feel like I would order in real life. I didn't just memorize the first aid CS book and go and then just put in everything that they thought. I kind of used my experience um, in the clinical setting do it during my clerkships and during medical school and the experience from practicing with the first aid book. And all together, that comes out to a passing score. Um, I did do well on all of the sections of the CS exam when my score report finally came out. So I was not in danger of failing. The CS exam was very forgiving. And you have to make many, many mistakes um, and many very obvious blunders to fail this exam. Of course, um, the exam has changed and maybe the scoring system has changed, but um, at the moment, from what I understand, it the same rules apply. You know, make sure you communicate with the patient well. Make sure you always wash or use sanitizer on your hands. Um, you know, look the patient in the eye when you're talking to him. Um, be empathetic with the patient. You know, sympathize. Try to, you know, just be a human being when you're speaking to them. Um, I think that sometimes what some international grads have a little bit of trouble with is this um, being able to show that they are empathetic with the patient. And I think that this is a problem because, for example, in India, you have such a huge patient load and you're constantly seeing, constantly seeing one patient after the other. And after a while, you feel a little jaded and you feel like, okay, well, just hurry up. You're just like, get on the exam table, you know, lift up your shirt, let me see your abdomen, whatever. <laughs> You're just going through the maneuvers very fast. And that whole empathy part is lost because you just don't have the time for it. And it's not that you don't empathize with the patient. It's just that you're not um, used to showing it anymore because, you know, that's not the way it is in a, pa in a um, country where there's such a huge population. You just don't have the time. 
But when you come for an exam in the U.S., you have to remember that all of these soft skills, the way you speak with the patient, it should be um, softer. It shouldn't be as brusque. It shouldn't be, um, the patient should feel comfortable speaking with you. Remember that if you have a very heavy accent or any way of speaking that inhibits the patient from understanding you, you need to work on that before you give this exam. Um, the, remember that that actor who is sitting there, if they don't understand what you're asking, even if you asked it, they will not be able to grade you because they will say you did not do it. You did not ask the question. You did not do the maneuver because they did not understand you. So you might know everything you're supposed to do for this exam, but if you don't communicate well, then you uh, will get lower points and you will have trouble passing. Especially if English is not your uh, first language, you should know that uh, how to counsel a patient in English, um, how to communicate what treatment you um, think the patient needs, what diagnostic exams uh, you think you would be needing to do. And um, basically, this exam is all about communication skills. Um, it says clinical skills, and yes, you will be graded on, you know, did you wash your hands? Did you do the right physical exam? But typically, once you are a graduate, or even if you've done your final year of medical school, you know uh, what physical exam needs to be done for each patient. You might have to review some of the maneuvers. Um, you might not be very comfortable doing some, so practice them. But um, generally, you should have an idea because, um, you know, you're in final year or you are a graduate of medical school, especially if you're an IMG. So typically, you will know the physical exam that you have to do. You just won't be able to communicate. So this exam should really be called communication skills instead of clinical skills because that is what it is about. So it is not only the communication with the patient, but also how you communicate in your patient note. Um, are you, you know, writing bullets and writing it very quickly, um, writing down the pertinent points and, you know, the pertinent negatives, not um, making a dense paragraph of things that maybe are not as important and then missing out on rel relevant uh, points. You know, so you, you need to practice doing that in the time frame that is allotted to you. That was something that I felt was a little difficult. I have a uh, pretty fast typing speed. Um, I used to be a scribe uh, working and I, I have that typing speed, yet to think that clearly um, about what the diagnoses were, I felt like if I had given my CK exam before my CS, I would have been faster in writing the diagnoses out and coming up with all the diagnostic exams. And if I had had a little bit more time, um, if I had paid more attention to my CS book, uh, First Aid CS, I would have done a little bit better. So all in all, I don't feel that the CS exam is as terrifying as some people uh, find it to be. But definitely don't be so laid back that you spend very little time preparing for it. I think about a month preparing for this exam um, is even too much. You know, you need like about two weeks if you're just going to sit and study for this exam and do nothing else. If you have a job or you have school, a month is fine. A couple hours um, a day would be enough to practice for this exam. And try to, you know, um, have a clinical experience like a clerkship or an, at least an observership, if nothing else, where, um, you know, you have practice communicating with patients uh, right before this exam. This exam is notoriously hard to uh, schedule, so definitely try to schedule it as far in advance as you can because it's possible that you will not get the spot or the center that you want. So, um, especially if you really want to stay in a particular center, then um, definitely you need to um, apply like months in advance. There are some debates online as to which center is better, especially for international grads. But honestly, they are all standardized centers and it's not like if you go to one center, they are going to treat you more harshly than another center. Um, still, you can go online and look at what certain people feel um, are better centers for IMGs. 
in the end, all of your notes are going to be um, evaluated in the Philadelphia Center anyway. So that is common for everyone. It's just the actual clinical experience is um, in different centers for everyone. But remember that they are standardized and um, they should be equal. And also when you're doing your entire schedule for when to give step one, when to give step two CK, and when to give CS, remember that the CS result takes at least three months to come. And if you um, give it, you know, after May or something, then you might not get your CS result in time for um, applying for the match. So um, your ARS applications are due in September. So remember that you need to give yourself that much time, especially if you're applying for your ECFMG certificate and you really want that in in September um, to be as competitive as possible. So, um, you know, plan that accordingly. And that's it. That is basically the Step 2 CS exam in a nutshell. It's a pretty um, straightforward exam and not so terrifying. I hope I was able to convey that to you. Um, if you still have more questions, if there's something that I left unanswered, then feel free to email me at studentdoctorsunite at gmail.com or leave a comment below. That way everyone can benefit from your question and my answer. Feel free to contact me and thank you for all the support that I've gotten. You can subscribe and like my videos to stay updated. Good luck for all your exams and happy holidays, you guys. Thank you.